Let me start off by saying, without any ambiguity, without any apology, that IPAP is intended to contribute to radical economic transformation. And let me be very clear about what we mean by that. And I want to say that, at its simplest, this means that IPAP must contribute to the achievement of two components simultaneously and interconnectedly. First of all, it's got to contribute to bringing about radical change in the structure of our economy. And in particular, to contribute to bringing about structural change that reduces our dependence as an economy on the industries and sectors that uh, we were consigned to under colonialism as a producer and exporter of primary commodities. I think that we know that uh, this is the least lucrative part of any value chain. And in fact, if you look at developments which are taking place uh, in uh, the global economy and in global value chains now, you will see that the value of a finished product that is constituted by the raw material that is included in it is both the most minor part of the final product and in fact is also a diminishing percentage of the value <coughs> of the final product. So if we are going to, uh, through our productive economy, if we are going to be able to move progressively and incre incrementally towards a future in which there is more opportunity for productive employment for more of our people, in which there is higher incomes and development of our productive forces, the first thing we've got to do is move into more value-added activities, and that means we've got to go through the path of industrialization. In our case of South Africa, we've also got to address the re-industrialization of our economy, uh, given that uh, we have suffered uh, over previous decades, we have suffered uh, some regression uh, in the performance uh, of uh, manufacturing. But secondly, and simultaneously, we've got to promote greater inclusivity uh, in uh, our economy. We've got to promote more involvement of more South Africans, and particularly South Africans that were excluded in the past, in roles of ownership, leadership, and participation in the productive economy. Those two things have got to happen simultaneously. And so as we industrialize, it's incumbent on us to simultaneously address the question of actively working to draw more historically disadvantaged people into leadership roles within the manufacturing sector itself. And I think that uh, we have to do this against the background of being cognizant that if we don't deliberately work in this regard, we will reproduce the existing patterns in which uh, people uh, who are historically disadvantaged do not play uh, any significant role. 